Hey, this is Kelly from the Dolly Rocks. This is Joe Queer from the infamous Queers. Hey, sweet P. Martini. Hey, this is Indica Flower. And you are listening to Our Brains Hurt. Our Brains Hurt. Our Brains Hurt. Losers. Well, they needed a jingle for the stupid little show, so they caught up the Jasons and we said, Fuck no. Then they caught us again and they gave us 20 bucks and we wrote them a song that said, You can't guess us. Then they gave us more money and they asked us really nice and we finally gave in and we said, All right, I'll write you a song, but it's gonna be a clone of a screeching weasel song that we heard a while ago. So we wrote them a jingle and it sounded really great. It was the best little jingle that their pockets ever had, but the file got corrupted and the email didn't work. Now they're stuck without a jingle singing, I agree. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Our Brains Hurt, and thank you so much for hanging out with us. Happy December. Hope everybody's had a great holiday season up to those points. Tis the season to spend money and rack up your credit and all that good stuff. So if you're going to do that, why don't you do it at these two places? This episode is brought to you by Punkbox. Punkbox is an awesome thing for yourself or a gift for somebody else, the punk rocker in your life. It's a monthly subscription service, once a month, delivered to your house or the house, or if you have an apartment or trailer, I'm sure they deliver there too. Merch, punk rock merch, stuff that you would normally find at a punk rock merch table, like buttons, patches, stickers, koozies, CDs, vinyl, cassettes, all sorts of cool shit. You get a box of it every month, punkboxrocks.com, that's punkboxrox.com. This episode is also brought to you by Merch Slut. Merch Slut, awesome punk rock merch. She has a lot of cool t-shirts that she gets directly from the band and the label, not cheap knockoffs. And she just got a, a shipment of um, awesome Funko Pop dolls, um, specifically Clerks 3. If you want to get your Jay and Silent Bob Funko dolls, head over to, and a lot of other cool shit too, MerchSlut.com. Now, let's get to the show. Tomorrow's the big night. It's going to be awesome. Um, yeah. I ran well, into Tyler today. When the podcast comes out oh that's right yesterday was the big night it was awesome it was it was the greatest it was so it was dude, so we got good so drunk it was oh so my cool. god it was so good remember when we fought that dude that was nuts yeah he didn't stand a chance <laughs> <laughs> don't forget about hawk swooping in and saving the day yeah that's hawk. right ah! hawk, hawk is amazing yeah <laughs> that's all you hear before you get knocked out <laughs> hawk. <laughs> hawk is amazing yeah, he's a true American hero. He's a, that's right. He really he's is the last real superhero. <laughs> Apparently, Italian blood told me they've sold like over twenty tickets just for them. Oh, that's why Tyler. Yeah. Went, Tyler asked me if we could start at eight thirty instead of eight. I said it wouldn't be a problem because the curfew's not until yeah. eleven or twelve, and the Jasons never play more than thirty minutes. So yeah, yep. it'll be fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, there's no band that's on this show that's going to care. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, and all honestly, it probably wouldn't start till eight thirty anyway. I mean, what show ever starts on time? Like uh, the Belvedere one. The timing. Yeah. Was oh, did it? Okay. Perfect. The one you weren't there. It was okay. fucking perfect. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I even somehow got Idle Minds to not go over their time. I don't know how wow. I did it. Yeah. Damn. That's that's a chore. That was Chris Joyce. Magic. Yeah. Shout out to Chris Joyce. How many songs did Chris Joyce begin singing the wrong lyrics to? <laughs> <laughs> None that night. You know what? Oh, really? Wow. But yeah, and um, uh, fucking uh, Mike wasn't there, so uh, Will okay. Will West played bass for him. Oh, Will smacks him in the shape then. Yeah, and uh, and it was it was funny too because like I think they must I think they only played like four songs because <laughs> okay, you know yeah. they they loved banter. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I swear yeah, they only yeah. played four songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a really great set. It's actually. like a stand-up act with some songs thrown in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was great. No, it was their set was totally great. It was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. I was shout I was, out of minds. Love you, Chris. Yeah, I was yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I was I was very uh very proud of Chris Joyce. Yeah. Very proud. Awesome. Well, we're talking to Jerry Lefemina tonight. Yeah. Friend of the show. Return guest, the downstrokes. Yes. Creator of the um 
Savage Mountain Punk Arts and Savage yep. Mountain Punk Festival. Yep, and the um, and the Crazy Horse uh, option on the Mount Rushmore. He was the one who started that. So, oh, that's right, he was, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he's been in the room for a bit, so I'm gonna let him in. How you gentlemen doing? It's good to see you both. Good man, it's been a while. It has been too long. Yes, I don't want to get into. It. I just want to kind of talk to you for a bit because I haven't talked to you in so long. <laughs> so, <laughs> how's life? Like, what 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 have you been up to? I'm getting married. I know. Congratulations. Yeah, getting totally. Married. Congratulations. Uh, we're running away to New Orleans in April. Sweet. Um, and then we're having a party here in um, in June in Cumberland, and the Nuclears are getting back together to play our wedding. Oh, huh. nice! That's amazing. Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, what my, my life is pretty much, I write, I publish books, I teach, I play rock and roll and I put on shows. I, I mean, it's really hard to complain. Yeah. You know, my son lives next door. Ron, do you know my son bought the house next door? Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Good for him. So he's living next door, which is great because he's, you know, he's not in my face and not in my hair, but I see him a lot. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah. So my life is good. What about you? Yeah, good. Good. I mean, um, I'm basically doing the same thing, just working, doing this podcast. Yeah. I mean, my daughter comes home, you know, because as you are a professor, she is a student. So she has the same kind of break. Um, yeah. I mean, just waiting for the holidays, spending a lot of money on tattoos. I think that's kind of how I deal with, uh, I don't know. The Met season? <laughs> Is what? that is that how you deal with yes. the Mets season? The Mets and, and the, the Jets. and the Jets and the Jets. Yeah, yeah. I just have to. Yeah, well, I pain. I I like pain, not the band. I'm smart the, enough the to not be a New York football fan. Yeah, well, good for you. <laughs> and my New York Rangers are the best team in the NHL. So yes, they are. Well, Matt's gonna hang up on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just you know, just just know that in like three or four years. Uh, Peter Laviolette is going to drive your team into the ground and then you're going to want him gone. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take what I got. He's better than Gerard Gallant. That's true. He is. Uh, uh, um, he he's, he's frustrating because he refuses to play young players. So if you have like a good draft and you know, you have good prospects in your system, they'll just stay in the system. Uh, that hasn't been true. I mean, for the Rangers right now, it hasn't been true. We got, well, a, we got several young players going. Yeah, yeah, but they're already established. I'm talking about like guys that are like trying to break the NHL, you know, like first round picks from a few. Was years he the ago. Caps coach? He was up until the manager is a coach or manager. Yeah, they his oh. he he played he okay, he ahead. coached through his um his his contract and they just didn't resign him. I'm not a hockey Ron, guy, so. I, I, Ron, you you run a, a sports podcast too, and you ask <laughs> that question. I'm not a hockey guy. All credibility is gone. I'm that a Knicks fan. I'm, a, I'm more of an NBA, I'm an NBA guy. I'm not. I'm a, I'm a Knicks fan, not a hockey fan. I don't know. I, I always a, a being a Knicks fan. Wow, you just pick them, don't you? I'm telling Knicks you, that's why Nets. I get. I I elect to pay a lot of money for pain to get tested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I'm I'm the hockey portion of the spot, the sports podcast, and Ron's the yeah. soccer portion. Yeah. I mean, so so life is good. I mean, Savage Mountain is growing like like gangbusters. Yes. Um. We uh, we 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 have an offer in for DOA to headline next year nice. on Saturday, and we already have booked the Flesh Tones to be the headliner on Friday. You know, Friday night we've done ska the last two years, and we've really wanted to do some. We wanted to expand that idea of punk rock as some of the stuff that came out of that scene at the end of the seventies and into the eighties, and the Flesh Tones seemed perfect. You know. Sort of big rock, power pop, mm -hmm. rally, you know, and so uh, we're excited. We're, you know, we we had 250 people in the joint uh, at Super Suckers, and we probably could have uh, could have crammed another 50 or 75. Um, nice, you know, like like w wanting to be in, and so we're actually we're opening an art gallery in May. Oh, sweet! An underground art gallery, and that's. Okay. The the landlord of that is actually working with us. They they bought a building that was pretty much gutted, and they're gonna rebuild all the apartments. But the basement is gonna be no, not the basement. The main floor is gonna be uh, about a three hundred and fifty to four hundred person performance venue. 
Hell yeah. It should be a multi-use art it, space, so we would use it as a gallery much of the time. Where's this? Um, and then we're going to have some artisan and local music store. Yeah, where is and, it? Is this Cumberland or is this Frostburg? Frostburg. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. And and the city is really gung-ho about it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hell Frostburg's yeah. a cool little... I like Frostburg little city, a lot. man. Yeah, like... Yeah. Frostburg is basically it's a lot like Fredericksburg except it doesn't have the surrounding suburbs. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a it's a cool little city. Yeah. And yeah. and Cumberland has been Cumberland has been great to us. I mean, I like, I'm not dismissing the bar where we have Savage Mountain which has been great, but we just we've outgrown it. So are you not going to have it there next year? We're having it there this summer coming up. Okay. 24 will be in Cumberland. Because uh, the building will, I mean, the building will require about eighteen months to get it into shape. Okay. Like we have we have not even talked to the architects yet about what the main floor would look like. Okay, but probably twenty twenty five going forward, yeah. you'll have it there. No. So, are, are, are you still doing it um, this coming year, twenty twenty four, at the same spot you've been? Yeah, we'll do it at Mezzo's in twenty twenty four. Mezzo's cool. That place looks pretty cool. It's it's great. Yeah. It's 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 really great. We had a documentary film crew. We have a documentary being made that is that they're going to try to show at Sundance and the New York Film Festival. Cool. Um, and they're doing like an hour long doc on Savage Mountain, which awesome. is just going to be huge. You know what? What an incredible thing for word of mouth and and visibility. I can't yeah. believe how much it's grown since you know Dante's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, that's I, Matt. You you guys played the f- first one. We did, yeah, yeah, we did, and and it was and it was pretty cool that year. I, I, yeah, I enjoyed myself. What's really amazing is how much it's grown, and yet it still has this vibe of like we don't want to fuck it up. We want to yeah. we want to keep this going. Yeah, uh, so I'm really grateful for that. It's awesome. Yeah, well, There's not much of that type of thing around anymore which is yeah. awesome yeah yeah I'm, I'm super stoked for you man that that's Thank uh you. and and just kind of like proud because <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that's that i don't know it's cool yeah you know well you I, both you guys were both involved from the beginning just about you know so i'm grateful for your support and friendship and oh, yeah. then the downstrokes are the downstrokes i mean you know we've been we had you know i'm really proud of the new record it's awesome yeah. i love yeah, it it's a, it's a great record you know, um, and and so uh, you know, we just keep doing what we do. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about the record. So you had it. Um, you worked with um, Mass Giorgino. Yeah, Giorgini. 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 Sorry, excuse me. I'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> let's try it again. So you, you worked, worked with, with Mass Giorgini. Giorgini. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, Mass Giorgini. <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it's a side note. So my last name is Sococcio. We're all, uh, you know, um, Jerry and I are Italian brothers. Um, there is actually a, a, a microwavable um, meal in Italy called uh, chicken Sococcio. <laughs> so if you go, there's like all these, there's like all these really cheesy commercials with them singing like Sococcio in Italian. How, how have we not talked about this on I don't this know, but podcast we'll before? <laughs> how have you not covered one of those? How have, <laughs> yeah. How am I just learning about this? What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> Sococcio. It's, it's a really funny commercial. But anyway, um, <laughs> Mass Giorgini. Talk about the album. Talk about. It nailed it. You just, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, uh, you know, yeah, uh, this album was one of those albums that felt like it took forever. Uh, we started writing it. We lost the drummer. We brought a new drummer in. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was uh, a waste of time and a waste of space. Uh, <laughs> Who, the new one or the old one? No, the, the, an interim drummer. Okay. There was an interim drummer. Was, it, was your interim drummer the one that played the last time you played an OBH show? Was that the guy? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait, I thought uh, the I thought the young blonde kid was from didn't he play bass for the exiles? No. No, the, the young blonde I... kid was uh in all all Frostburg Cumberland regional bands, and he's the one who drummed on the album. We love him. Okay. Uh Kyle Kyle Wagner. He's in a band called The Loner. He's in like six different bands. He's in a okay, band yeah. called Jorn. 
I mean, all solid classic drummer. drummer. Car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the classic drummer. Um, and he's the drummer on the album. Before that, we had, uh, we had a guy who, um, he had the, the bad combination of being extraordinarily lazy and having a stainless steel drum kit. Um, <laughs> and, and, and who, right before we fired him, said, you know, as, as, uh, as James Bond said, well, you can hire me or fire me. And I thought to myself as we were driving back from a show, you've just given me permission. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish him no ill will. It just was a bad fit. It was just a bad yeah. fit personality yeah. wise. It was just a bad fit. Uh, you know, probably in, in his time in his life. Um, uh, and uh, Kyle and I were talking about some other stuff and, and some things had gone down. He wasn't uh, a band, some bands he'd been working with. He wasn't anymore. And I said, hey, would you just like come and drum with us and see how it goes? And he said, yeah, and it was great. And so he played um, he played the last time we, we played uh, OBH and mm -hmm. uh, uh, he's played with us for the last year and a half or so. Uh, he played with Richie Ramone with us. He played uh, the festival with us. He's great. He's so good. Um, and, uh, you know, so, but but the upshot is it took really long to record this album. And some of these songs are like three years old mm -hmm. because I had written them, um, you know, after, you know, so we recorded, um, unsafe at any speed we recorded in 2000 in 2020 mm -hmm. um so i had written some of these songs you know, right after that and uh it took us we then we went to the studio and we ended up with uh, the guy who recorded it was was terrific but i don't think he knew what to do with us so then mm -hmm. those became demos and we we had to go into a new studio and then Jay Prozac said, "Hey, why don't you? Uh, why don't we do a split LP?" Mm -hmm. And so then we like had to record six more songs, and so we took eight and two, and then two and four for the split LP. It got it got all kind of fuzzy. And meanwhile, um, I really I, I love Moss, and 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 I've 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 been talking. The Moss and I both used to play. Uh, we were both were, were friends. He probably better than I was with Kim Shattuck of the Muffs. Mm -hmm. um, but when Kim died, he and I spent that, he and I really kind of bonded talking about her. And uh, we both used to play words with friends with Kim. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and Kim was, would be so funny. Kim would do this thing where if she lost to me, she would say, I should know better than playing with a fucking poet. <laughs> and she wouldn't play me again uh, for weeks. But if she won, she immediately would hit restart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and God, I miss her. Actually, we have a cat named Kim Shattuck after her. Oh, nice. Uh, because when oh, we yeah. found her in the shelter, Mercedes said, she's such a little muff. You have to get her. We'll name her Kim Shattuck. <laughs> um, so Moss and I, and, and Moss is, you know, he's a literature guy. He has a mm -hmm. degree in literature. So we bonded over talking about poetry and all that stuff. We have, he has an essay uh, in this book of bad gigs that I co-edited. He, uh, he he's got a song um with squirt gun on a, a christmas antho that i helped put together for coffin curse and so when i asked him if he would if he would master it he he said yeah and he had to do a lot of work uh mm -hmm. because there were two different recording studios involved um and and you know um you know uh there are a lot of people who who have studios who are uh, who are pretty good engineers, but still are, you know, we come at it like if you're like, oh, I'm I'm I know how to produce punk rock, and your your focus is, you know, 1990s Offspring, Green Day. Mm -hmm. That's not us. Yeah, you know that that's not the downstrokes, and so yeah. um, there there was a learning curve for one of the engineers, and it just took time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have enough songs for a new album. Like, I'm just itching to get back. Yeah. But, like, we have to play mm -hmm. this one. 
<laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. We have this this split coming out too. So, um, but With I'm, who? Really, I'm, Who's the I'm split really with? excited. The, that's the Prozac one, right? That's the Prozac one. Oh, oh that's right. Okay, Prozac. Cool. Uh, but I'm really, I'm, I'm really proud of this record, uh, and I'm even prouder that we got a. Uh, we got a, a creativity grant from the Maryland State Arts Council to help fund the production of it. Oh fuck yeah! So that's awesome. how we paid for some of the engineering and mastering, and and how we paid the cover artist, who's a local artist, and he he did these great drawings and did an insert for us. Uh, it was really like this. Really, uh, it was such a it was such a terrific project in terms of. Both recording studios we used were local. The the guy who did the vi- the cover art and then hand lettered the insert is a local artist. Um, you know, it it really felt close to home. Where where is Masses? Is he out of Ohio or where is he? At? He's been out of Indiana for years, Indiana, but he's okay. in Italy right now. He's in Rome. Oh, like like permanently in Rome, like living there. Uh, he's living there. He okay. is. Uh, he is in Rome for the foreseeable future. Hmm. So Sonic okay. Iguana is uh, more of an idea than a place at the moment. Gotcha. Hmm. Interesting. Have you been to Italy? I have been, but which, not which parts? recently. Okay. Uh, mostly Naples, which is where where my family's from. Naples and, and same Florence. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, my my family my family left Naples in the 1870s when when as it turns out about 99 percent of the Lefeminas left Naples mm. and they went first to uh, Sicily and then yeah. came to the U.S. Um, okay, yeah, 75 percent of my family is from Naples as well. Um, the other parts from Sicily. How uh, how is yeah. it that I constantly surround myself with Italians on this podcast? Because you're a um, <laughs> Because you're lucky. You're a good person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah. never, never, never do I get any other Dutch. Fuck I'm the nice. only one ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want. I want to go to Italy so bad. Um, but I really want to go to Germany as well. I love. I love all things German. I was uh, I, I this summer I went to a writers retreat in Liechtenstein. Nice. And uh, after a week in Liechtenstein, a little more than a week in Liechtenstein, um, I'd flown into Zurich, so I spent a day or two in Zurich, um, and then I went to Munich for three days. Mm, that's and, where I want to go. Yeah. Uh, I got off the train. I wasn't out of the train station yet in Munich, and I was in love with Munich. Yeah. I, I'm a firm believer that you go to cities and, you know, and I don't mean I don't like them. Like, I like London. I don't feel at home in London. Yeah. I, I like Dublin and I feel completely at home in Dublin. Mm-hmm. Dublin's great. Yeah. Uh, and Mu- like Zurich, it was like everybody was looking at me like, you don't belong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but in Munich, it was like, sit down, have another drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a pastry while you're there. Hell yeah, yeah. Um, I could live off of pretzels and German beer. So um, my my I, definitely like um, Oktoberfest in Munich is on my bucket list for sure. Um, and Sicily, mm-hmm. Palermo. I want to go to Palermo. Got to do the seven fishes in Italy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ron, yes. do you do the seven fishes? I do. I do a few fishes. So um, <laughs> I don't know if we always make seven, but at Christmas Eve. So growing up, my my grandmother always did the seven fishes on Christmas Eve. Um, and then once I kind of, you know, had a kid and had my own place, I do um, lobster tail every Christmas Eve with like shrimp. And and I do get paella. Um, and I ordered from this really good Spanish restaurant and they have like I think there's like four fishes in there. So it's really more like the five or six fishes for me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I always get, I get, I get uh, the one thing that we, I do do every, every um, Christmas Eve is I have lobster tail flown in from Maine um, th- that I order. It's expensive as fuck, but like it's once a year. So, um, but yeah, I do eat seafood on Christmas Eve as every good um, Paisan should. 
I I I do it as well. Uh, usually, it's like Christmas Eve through Christmas Day. I give mm-hmm. myself twenty four when I'm hosting. Right. For the last couple of years, when I've hosted Christmas, I've made sure to do it. Um, this yeah. upcoming year, we'll do Christmas uh, at my brother's, so that won't be an option. Where's that? Um, Jersey. We'll be. Oh, Jersey? We'll be in. We'll be in, part of Jersey. Uh, in North Central Jersey. Okay. Right. I had no idea that the Seven Fishes was a thing. I had no idea about it yeah. until I started doing this podcast with Ron. And uh <laughs> and now like I want to be like a you know an unofficial Italian. I need those seven fishes. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it's the best when I was a kid, man, like my grandmother, man, she would make like she would do lobster tail and she would get she would get like all sorts types of different like shrimp cocktail, shrimp everything. And then she would make this like pasta with a special spicier yeah. sauce with calamari and uh, shrimp and all this and uh, it was the so greatest jealous. meal of the year the greatest meal of the year so jealous yeah uh, i do uh you know i i will do like shrimp cocktail and and some sort of uh you know swordfish or shark mm-hmm. oh, or, oh. or something like that and oh, then i make uh, my son's favorite or maybe i'll make crab cakes uh, yeah. my son's favorite dish that i make is uh, uh a fettuccine with a white wine butter reduction Oh with mussels, yes, lambs. This is my favorite um, Italian dish. I get know, it every time we go out. Crab, this is it right here. Yeah. Uh, whatever I get, shrimp, uh, calamar. Uh, yeah. You know, and so, uh, you know, uh, it's great. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, you know, and uh, and my son loves it, and and Mercedes has a good uh, as a good New Orleans girl. Uh, you know, the other boot. You know, there's a. There's That's a right. couple of pizzerias in New York called Two Boots, um, and their their Two Boots are Italy and Louisiana, um, nice. and they and and so you get Cajun Italian fusion pizza, mm. which let me tell nice. you is a bit of paradise. Yeah, Cajun is awesome. I've never been to New Orleans. Um, we are running away to New Orleans for our yeah. wedding. That's where we're getting married. Matt, you've Crazy. been. You yeah, played there, right? Yeah. 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 What, um, Jerry? What's your 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 favorite or I or like your go to like food that comes from the water? Like whether it be freshwater seafood. What's your what's your favorite? I I love uh, I love crab. Crab. Uh, I love That's crab, you know good choice. It's mm-hmm. it's it's a great choice. Um, and and I love uh, I love calamari. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do not too. the not the not the you know the the crappy circular uh <laughs> right. fried breaded but um i have a great recipe for a sort of pan sauteed crispy uh calamari with chilies and mint oh oh, oh that sounds oh. amazing throw it over throw it over some throw it over some linguine mm-hmm. oh it's so uh so since crab was your first answer and you live in maryland are you a maryland blue crab guy or would you rather have like you know crab legs like king alaskan crab or something like that you know why 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 do i have to choose like like, (laughs) right like uh you know i i was i was at mercedes's folks's house you know at the end of summer and we had uh we had our mallets out and the blue crabs, okay. and we were going to town. But so good. Uh, if if I'm at the if I'm at the grocery store and they got those king crab legs and I could do something yeah. with it, uh, who who the hell am I to say no? Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah, I, totally. I I will say though, like being that I have spent my entire life living in Virginia and a little bit of Maryland because my dad lived there when I was growing up. Uh, there is just there's something that is just like super special that a lot of this country doesn't know about oh, yeah. like, sitting down with bushels of blue Maryland blue crabs yep. and like Corona's yeah. and a big old bucket of crab spice and just sitting around a picnic table and drinking beers and eating crabs for hours. For like hours. Yes. Yeah. hours. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it is like it is one of the greatest things on the planet. Because it doesn't fill you up. You can go literally yeah. all day. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, well, it's it's such a good time in New in New Orleans and in Louisiana. Of course, what they do is they do something similar, but they do it with crawdads, and you mm-hmm. get so little meat on crawdads that it takes you like a month. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've I've actually been to a crawdad boil. 
Those are super fun too. Yes, we we we've, we've actually had one here. Nice, really. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah, where Mercedes you, is from. She's from New yeah, Orleans. This is okay. from, she's from Louisiana, Mississippi gotcha. originally. Do you do it with like the like like the the crawdads, like the corn on the cob, the potatoes? Oh yeah. Uh, oh man, it's oh, what what a uh, actually, great experience. If you guys want a treat, you guys come up here for uh, Mercedes makes hella gumbo. Nice. Just, just her gumbo is out of this world. Um, and, I love uh, gumbo. Yeah. You know. Well, I know I know exactly why you're marrying her. So um. <laughs> I'm sure other things besides the job. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I do 95 percent of the cooking, Ron. So I do too. <laughs> yeah, but the other five yep. percent when it's gumbo, I'll, I'm not going to complain. Fuck yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you really, Ron? Ninety five percent of the cooking. I did well. Okay, I used to do a lot of the cooking. I am um, learning tonight, man. Yeah, lately I haven't. <laughs> I've been I've been slacking ever since I had my surgery. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I don't. I, yeah, my wife hints a lot that um she's been doing a lot more cooking recently. Um, but I used to do all the. I love cooking. I I used part of my um GI bill when I got out of the Navy to go to pastry school. Um, oh, and I pastry learned how to. School. Yeah, I, I make the best apple pie you'll ever have. I'm a very modest person. I don't brag ever, except for my apple pie. This is two uh, episodes in a row. You've I'm, talked I'm about thinking, Ron, there yeah. might have to be an apple pie off because I got an apple tree in my backyard. Oh, shit. Okay. Starting mid-September, I make like two pies a week Okay. Um, through through November, you know? Um, All right. So, so I'm about yeah, it. I don't mind kicking your ass in that. That'll be cool. <laughs> I'm a one-trick pony. That's all I got, though. Is that, is that all you got is apple pie? Mm. Yeah, I. We actually, you know, I mean, this is like the most unpunk rock uh, podcast ever. Fuck it. I, Fuck I, it. I recently, <laughs> I recently, a uh, year and a half ago, we we redid our kitchen, and and I was like, I'm getting an oven that does everything. It's got the built-in air fryer. And it's taken me forever to learn. Like, it's Sweet. a hotter oven. It does like so. You yeah. know. I, I've had to learn so much about the new oven for my cooking, mm-hmm. uh, but wow, it's just and I've and I've really spent the last like six months, you know, saying to Mercedes, you know what? Uh, I cook you know, like all of us. We get into our comfort zone. I'm like, I am, I am stretching my wings. So I made a Korean fire chicken a couple of weeks ago. Out nice. of this world, nice. Uh, I love just, it. Just you know, like. If I'm gonna be cooking for the next thirty years, uh, uh, fucking a, I don't want to be cooking the same thing. Yeah. Are, are you are you by chance a part of the um the the punk rock foodie Facebook group? No, I didn't even know there was such a thing. I didn't either. It's huge. It uh, there's like it's like thousands and thousands and thousands of people on it. Um, punk rock foodie is that what's called? Yeah, it actually. Um, I don't know if he still runs it or not, but one of the admins. Uh, it's my buddy Steve from out in California. Uh, he's a, he's like a, he's won like eleven Emmys or something. He's the oh, guy who yeah, did the yeah. Savage Remains video, and a bunch of other videos for people or whatever. But he's the one, I believe, he's the one who started it years ago. Well, nice. Robin, our guitarist, our lead guitarist, he's he's a former chef, nice. and so um, when when we go on tour, uh, you know, we're always looking for like we're always like checking out. Like what towns are we driving through? Um, we did an entire tour that included taquerias everywhere. <laughs> um, so Robin and I'll go to these places and we're like, oh, we wanted to and but our our you know our base play and and Kyle is a vegetarian, which makes complicates things. And then yeah. and then I, I Greg is he's got the 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 food spectrum for Greg, our bass player. Is that of like a thirteen-year-old boy? I want a hamburger with cheese and ketchup, nothing else. No pickles and French fries, <laughs> extra crispy. Yeah. You know, and Robin and I are like, oh, we'll have the fried feta and the, uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> like, you know, uh, the pork belly. Uh, you know. Uh, and, uh, it's so, it's so funny. So, so we're always looking at these places like, 
okay, what else do they have on the menu? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm going to find the weirdest thing and I'm going to order it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's so funny. I, I, but I, I mean, one of the things I love about going on tour, of course, is that uh, Frostburg does have a limited supply of restaurants. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of interesting cuisine here. Um, if it's not coming out of my kitchen or Robin's kitchen. Um, and so, uh, you know, I mean, one of the great joys for us is being on the road and sort of seeing what's out there. Yeah. And if it's a taco, even better. Especially a birria taco. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We want, so we want to play a couple songs on this podcast. So what, which, which two songs would you like us to play? God, you're asking me to pick among my babies. I know. You know? <laughs> it's the Sophie's you choice. Have, of you questions. have 10 children. <laughs> Kill eight of them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this is, this is the new question because <laughs> you've already answered the first one. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, let's go, let's go for like one of the most unpunk rock songs on the album, which I think is Flying Metal Death Trap. Cool. Um, although, it, although it, it has, you know, it has lots of like, uh, I think Slade or Tin Lizzy uh, overtones um, and a little bit of Iggy Pop probably in the vocals, you know, it's very kind nice. of proto punk.
And then let's go like the exact opposite direction and go for like a balls out punk song. Let's go with uh, let's go with Kaput, which is the first song on the album. Cool, that's a good one. I like that song. You know, and and I shouldn't say for me, for the four of us, you know, we're, we've always been interested in like this thing we call punk rock. What are its borders? You know, where yeah. where does it end? I mean, I'm much more interested at this time in my life to be the replacements mm-hmm. uh, with perhaps slightly more sobriety. Yeah. <laughs> um, slightly, slightly. <laughs> you know, um, you know, then I am sort of, you know, you know, then I am sort of being the descendants, you mm-hmm. know, and I love the descendants. I don't mean that in a disparaging way. Right. I just mean that I just, you know, when we sit down to work on songs, I'm not thinking it's got to sound like this. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got to sound like us. Right. And the more we play, you know, I, I think the best way to talk about it is like, I, I, I don't, have you guys heard the new Damned record? I have not. The new no. Damned record, Darkadelic, is fucking amazing. Wait, when did it come out? Yeah. It came when? out in the spring. I didn't even know they put out a new one. Me neither. Yeah. The new Damned record is fucking amazing. Okay. It's called mm-hmm. Darkadelic. Um, I be and and, and Alex is a big yeah. damn fan. So in October, I took Alex to see to see them at Sil- in Silver Spring. And you Fillmore? know what they did? Yeah, at the Fillmore, which is yeah. a really nice venue, actually. Nice, yeah. Uh, but you know what the damn did? I mean, imagine this is a band that what do the fans want to hear? 
fans want to hear neat 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 and new rose mm -hmm. and love song and smash it up and so what the yeah. first 45 minutes of the set they played two old songs and they played the entire new fucking record nice and they basically their basic attitude was like look we're not a retro band we're not yeah. we're not sitting on our laurels and playing we love this record and we're going to play it and I, and it was so good and you nice. could tell that uh, Dave and Captain and Paul Gray and 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 Monty, their keyboardist, who's been with them for you know twenty five years, so he might as well be you know an original member at this point. Yeah. Um, but you could tell they were just loving these songs and loving playing them. And if the audience was scratching their head, they didn't care. Yeah, <laughs> and it's and it's and it's a really, I mean, it's a punk record. But it's a punk record in the way that a band from the seventies thinks of a punk record. Right. Right. Uh it's so good. And so, you know, I mean, uh you know, so you know, for us, it's like, you know, I mean, I think of the Kinks as a punk band. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, and, and I and I think not? of the Who as yeah. a punk band as much as I think of, you know, the MC five or um, you know, sweet as punk bands, you know, and then and of course, you know go from there uh jackson and, and five you're just kidding <laughs> that's a funk band that's, that was my first we, concert we, ever we, we erased clubs. we erased yeah. a little bit of the yeah. p that's right yeah that <laughs> was my first concert ever when i was like five or six <laughs> jackson mine five. was frank zappa frank zappa was your first uh, frank zappa was my first concert Nice. Matt, what about you? What was your first concert ever? Uh, Nine Inch Nails and David Bowie. Oh, shit. I saw that tour in Detroit. Yeah, I saw it uh, in D.C. So it was great. I was, I, was, I was eight when I saw Zappa, and it wasn't by choice. I was taken by my sister and her boyfriend. I think they were stuck taking care of me. Mm -hmm. uh, and her boyfriend at the time was like, one of the five biggest Zappa bootleggers in the in the world. Mm -hmm. They traded all these, uh, and and I and I remember I I didn't know any of the songs. I didn't know like, like part of me was bored, and part of me was like the spectacle of it and the sonic of it was really overwhelming. And and I I I like you know only years later did I think wow that was special. I I mm -hmm. couldn't. Comp, you know, at eight, what did I want to hear? You know, I wanted to probably at eight would have been 1976. You know, I probably wanted like Casey and the Sunshine Band. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. Damn, eight and 76. I was yeah, negative I'm an old one in 76. Ron. I'm an I was, old <laughs> I, was, I was negative one in 80s in 76. <laughs> wait, so did you get to see? No, wait, six. So did you? You were alive when the Jets won the Super Bowl in '69. Yes, I was. I was alive when the Mets won the World Series in '69 <laughs> too. As it turns out, I don't remember it. My brother was at the last game of that of that World Series. Oh, really? And, yeah, shit. he had a bit of grass for years. He had a bit of grass uh, from from Shea Stadium. Oh, damn! At the nice. end of the game, uh, I don't think the grass, you know, after you know fifty years has survived. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Nor did Shea Stadium. Yeah, uh, just nor did Shea Stadium. Just the toxic waste green pond that existed behind it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but the the first concert I I really wanted to go to that I saw was Bowie on the Scary Monsters and Super Creeps tour. Hmm. I had a I had a friend with a very cool sister uh, that took uh, he and I, um, hmm. and then uh, the first like punk show I saw. Um, Back when MTV had the basement tapes, you know, before there were a shit ton of music videos, people would send, uh, you know, homemade videos, VCR tapes to MTV. And Kraut had a video on mm -hmm. in 1982. And this cool friend who had cable, I mean, we were poor, we didn't have cable, you know, we had yeah. five channels with a, with a, broken rabbit ear antenna that oh, we would yeah. attach tin the foil hanger. to. Um, yep. But I, I had seen these crowd videos and, and I, you know, and I thought, well, these guys are cool. 
and we were we were visiting my my aunt who had the apartment at First Avenue and East Sixth Street that I inherited. Um, and there were flyers. So it was right around the corner from Tompkins Square Park. And there were flyers for an outdoor show at Tompkins Square Park with Kraut and Reagan Youth and Murphy's Law and nice. Heart Attack. Um, and this might have been like Reagan Youth's first show. Like it was really early in some of those bands' existence. Um, but I went to it. It was outdoors. It was free. And it was life changing. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, really. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Murphy's Law, they, they've been around forever then. Shit. Oh. I saw them. They opened for the, uh, when I saw the original Misfits in Jersey a couple yeah. of years back, they opened for them. Yeah. The, the, original, the original Misfits, we thought it would never happen. Yeah. But it did. The money was too good. Yep. And they yeah. were too old. Did you see that tour at all, Jerry? <laughs> I had no interest. Yeah. Uh, you, I, yeah. I'm going to say something that uh, that is going to get a, a lot of people pissed off at me. <laughs> um, I just, I, I there are songs by the Misfits mm. I, I like, but mm. the whole cult of the Misfits thing, I don't get it. I just I don't. Yeah. I think Sam Hain was a better band. Um mm -hmm. You know, and, you know something, uh, Sam Hain. I went and saw them on on their like reunion tour thing. It, it was on Halloween night in DC in 2014, I believe. And um, and you know, I've seen all the. I own the Sam Hain DVD from back in the day, and I've seen videos of them live from back in the day. New school with with you know Danzig at his age now, or at least in 2014, almost 10 years ago, they blew me away. I was so fucking impressed at that show. I was ready to just, you know, kind of sit back and be like, I'm watching this for nostalgic reasons and nothing more because this is probably going to be a shit show. Not at all. It was fucking amazing. I, I, you know, I remember seeing them at the Ritz, you know, as a teenager and they were terrific. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I get the whole, oh, we like the horror punk thing, but you listen to those misfits recordings, you're not thinking, wow, this is really yeah. Yeah, produced yeah. great. It it <laughs> there... the rock, how was the misfits reunion? Honest, honest, honest. Uh not that good. So <clears throat> <laughs> so I went <laughs> the, the only cool thing about it for me was that I was on um I had signed up for ancestry.com and oh. When I was on Ancestry.com, I was contacted by somebody who ended up being my, my third cousin. And she was super into punk rock. Um, so I, I got to meet with her and her side of the family. So it was a, kind of like this weekend in Jersey. And it just happened to be when the Misfits were playing there. Um, it was where the Devils play. The, uh, the right, arena the in rock. Newark. Yeah, yeah. The um, Center. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we we you know I, I got to meet her and we you know we hung out and, and uh we went to the show together and it was awesome hanging out with her and, and meeting that side of the family that I'd never met before. But as far as the show itself, first of all, it's, <laughs> so um Murphy's Law and then uh Suicide on Tendencies opened up for them. Um and the sound was great for the first two bands, and then something happened when when Dan, when the mistress were playing their first song. The sound was fucked up. So the first song that the Misfits were playing was basically the three, you know, um, Jerry only, uh, you know, they were all playing their instruments. And it was basically them playing the song and Glenn Danzig yelling at the sound guy without like, <laughs> it's just like the sound guy was on the side of the stage. And Glenn was just like pointing at him and probably <laughs> cursing and you couldn't really hear anything because he kept fucking up but they they never played more than one song in a row so they would play one song then all the lights would go out for about 30 seconds to a minute and they then the lights would come back on and they would play another song every fucking song it's for dancing a, yeah they would, it sure as hell isn't for jerry or doyle no. I'll tell you that much or or dave song, lombardo yeah, for that matter lights, they would play one song the lights would go out for 30 seconds at least mm. 
they which, were doing what, whatever yeah. they were doing, whatever they were doing, and the lights would come back on, they would play another song. That which, was the entire show. Which guy in the band is not <laughs> in shape? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe it was for the, the, the backup guitarist that they have who stands in the shadows back by the drummer, which I believe is AC Slade. Yeah, he I didn't yeah, it was probably his like fault. the fourth or fifth song. It's gotta be his fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very bizarre. Very bizarre. Um, uh, and they uh, also uh, made uh, us put all of our phones in a case so we couldn't take pictures. They had us like lock our phones up, up, which I I ripped open in the middle of the set and I took pictures anyway. Cause yeah, because that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know, Jerry, since you were talking about like the, the the recording quality or the production quality of like the Misfits albums, what's always been the most hilarious thing to me about that is their best sounding, best produced album should have been their first album. But because I, what I can only assume is Danzig's fault. <laughs> they got into an argument with the record label and this album never comes out till like 1997 static age? Should yeah when it should have yeah. come out in 1976 or 1977 but it doesn't come out till 19 till 30 years later and nobody had ever heard it up until yeah. that point i'm sure well, i'm sure some people did but like and it ends up being their best sounding record yeah, yeah. by far <laughs> Ron, you, you mentioned suicidal tendencies. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you I'll give you a little Jerry LaFemina trivia. The first show I ever played with my uh, hardcore band Expletive Deleted mm -hmm. was opening for suicidal tendencies at a CBGB matinee in 1984. Nice. Time, yeah. time gets really wonky, bonky. Yeah. When you, when you, once you, once you start going back like forty years, it's like I, oh, I yeah. got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I was so so uh, a couple of years ago, the Damned announced that the original lineup was going to tour England. Okay. And and I said, I've never seen the original lineup. You know, maybe we'll fly over to to London yeah. and go. And and a friend of mine goes, Jerry. We were there at the Ritz in 89 when the original lineup played a set and then the Paul Gray lineup made, played a set. Don't you remember? And I'm like, how many beers did I have? It's, it sounds familiar. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, grow in New York in the 80s. I, I sometimes saw four shows a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blur. Yeah. You know, the things I remember are like seeing Motorhead in Brooklyn and it being the loudest thing in the like uncomfortably oh, yeah. loud. Yep. Yeah, I remember seeing them at the 930 Club. And it was I remember I, w I went there with my friend Lee and Tom. Um, And Lee was like he he played drums for all these like crazy punk bands in this area. And he was like, he's like, you need to wear um earplugs which i never i still don't wear i'm gonna be deaf soon same um but whatever i don't care mm -hmm. um but it was insane how loud that fucking show was it's like how did how is this happening it's crazy the damned no the um motorhead uh, motor oh, motor motorhead yeah, yeah. but mo <sighs> motorhead i'm super glad i got to see them yeah before lemmy died oh how about fucking shane mcgowan man r.i.p yeah God damn, dude. Like one of the best vocalists and one of the best lyricists uh of my time. Yeah. And if you and if you and if you had to go, at least he took an asshole like Henry Kissinger with him. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You know, he was such good friends with Sinead O'Connor. And, really? and uh he, he yeah, they were very, very close. Uh and you know, she died earlier this year. So mm -hmm. uh Two amazing Irish voices. And if you never heard the duet they did uh on the Shane McGowan and the Pope's record, it's called uh it's called Haunted. Mm -hmm. Uh it is it is stunningly beautiful. Cool. It is stunningly beautiful. You know, because what is more punk rock than saying something is stunningly beautiful? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to see the the Pogues twice, once in Baltimore, once in DC. So um, 
I got to see them several times, and I got to see them once when Strummer was filling in for Shane, and oh, wow. that was unbelievable. Yeah, I unfortunately never got to see them. I mean, I mean, he what was he sixty five? I think. Um, yeah, he was sixty five, which is yeah. young. It's young, but for the lifestyle that he led. Well, yeah, yeah, he got uh, out there. You know, I, I I can't imagine he had a liver uh, the last uh, ten years. Um, and you know, he shattered his pelvis in 2015 and he's been in a wheelchair ever since. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't, I mean, I, 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 I was sad, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, if I had heard he died five years ago, I would have been sad, but unsurprised, you know? Right. Oh yeah. 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 Some people can just take a beating, man. Yeah, I can you imagine? But but think of it this way: Keith Richards. I know. I mean, the nuclear <laughs> bomb is going to hit. It's going to be a whole bunch of cockroaches and Keith Richards. He's an alien. Around. He's he's got to be an alien. I mean, how long did it take for the first member of that band to to kick it? Because it was their drummer that went first, right? Or or are they all still alive? I didn't. No, the dr- drummer is the drummer. Is, uh, Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. Charlie Watts died. Yeah, okay. uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, yeah, because he was the first of them, right? Well, you know, yeah, Brian Jones died a long time ago. But, oh, okay. But, yeah. Um, yeah. but he'd been thrown out by then, so he wasn't a member when he died. Uh, oh, gotcha. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I mean, it's amazing that we have a rock band whose tour is sponsored by the AARP. <laughs> I understand that they've changed the title of Mother's Little Helper to Grandmother's yeah. Little Helper. <laughs> But who have done more drugs than like I know, you know the rest of the civilization combined? <laughs> well, no, 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 no. You have to take Johnny Thunders out of that equation. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the rest of civilization minus Johnny Thunders. There you go. <laughs> Maybe that's the key. They've done so many drugs, and they're, they're just, just kind of like preservatives. Yeah, yeah. They killed... they're, they're mummies. They've yeah. just been mummies for the past. Yeah, they're, they're, that's, <laughs> they've been mummifying themselves be their entire lives. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you, do you know the story about Keith writing the Satisfaction riff? Do you know? No, this? I don't. He was uh-uh. he was recording on like a a, a cassette recorder, you know, uh-huh. at home, and he like nodded off. He was doing heroin. He nodded off. And he woke up the next morning and he said, I wonder if I played anything good. And he played it back. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get no satisfaction brought to you by heroin. Yet, yet again, <laughs> heroin writes an amazing yes. song. <laughs> heroin is undefeated. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it's the only good thing heroin has ever done. Heroin <laughs> writes great music. It doesn't mingle with humans well. No. <laughs> Oh, They've written oh. some good literature too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, Charles Bukowski uh, it wouldn't be Charles Bukowski. Yeah, without and you know, and William I guess Burroughs it, would not be William Burroughs without heroin. And I guess it, and I guess it's kept pain out of the mind of a dying soldier a time or two as well. But you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly. I, I try to keep, I try to keep pain out of mine as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, i won't go there but yeah um, <laughs> hey they're looking they're looking for a lead guitarist they're yeah. making a comeback <laughs> and a so, keyboardist or saxophone player really saxophone yeah. player yeah i don't know what that's about but yeah there's been facebook posts made because i keep getting tagged in them <laughs> wow <laughs> you're it like god damn it <laughs> why am i getting tagged in this <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> We played with them. I, I gave them a show in Indianapolis with us once, and um, they were looking for a bass player. I've told the story before, but and I told them, I told Tim, I was like, "I'll be the bass player if my if my uh, pain name can be Lower Back, like Lower Back Pain." <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't, didn't he didn't find that funny at all. He didn't appreciate it, <laughs> which made it ten times funnier for me. So. Um, <laughs> I am not the basis for pain uh, after that, by the way. <laughs> Lower back pain is not a name they won on their album. <laughs> I love it. 
Um, oh. <laughs> all right, Jerry. So we've we've done the three questions to you before. Like, what would your final meal be? But I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Wait, hold on, you, hold on, Ron, yeah, before go, you go. start this. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if Jerry, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, because you know we ask these questions every episode now, and adding the crazy horse to the Mount Rushmore that was you, and that has <laughs> and that has stuck. Yep, the first time you were on, that was the first time we did that, and it has stuck. We have done that every episode. Yeah, I am so glad. I'm so glad that I have I've started a precedent. That's yeah, right. yeah, every, yeah, you did. <laughs> every episode from yours on has had an extra member. Oh, uh, yeah, every episode that we've had a guest, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So uh, normally I say if you're on death row, what would your final meal be? But if you're on death row and they were like, hey, you could have one last alcoholic beverage, what would your final drink be? It would be a mojito. Okay. Mm. Just a nice. straight up regular mojito. Regular with with Classic. dark rum, with dark rum okay. rather, rather than white rum, but straight up mojito. It's a good drink. It's classic. Great drink, uh, you know. Uh, and let's face it, if I've been in prison all this time, I'd want a little bit of like that island sensibility. Like it's the mm-hmm. only the only vacation I'm gonna have, you know. Um, you know, the alternative would be something like a Caparena, which is a Brazilian. Drink mm-hmm. that's similar to it, or a margarita, you know, something that would yeah. take me to the beach in my head. Okay, <laughs> so I, I would imagine you've been to Mil- Milwaukee a time or two in your life. I've been to Milwaukee many a time. Mm. Okay, so being that, have you ever by chance been to? And I know this is a weird question coming from Milwaukee, but a tiki bar in Milwaukee called Foundation Tiki Bar. No, I have not. If you find yourself in Milwaukee again. Make that a point of reference. It's, it is it is by far the best tiki bar I have ever been to, and it's weird that it's in Milwaukee. <laughs> but that I mean, when you walk into this tiki bar, Hawaiians like you're walking fly there <laughs> onto an island. Th- these dudes, these dudes that ran this place, literally went around the Pacific Islands for months and months and months, learning recipes, original recipes that have been made for like hundreds of years by all these islanders and spending time with them and came back and made a tiki bar in milwaukee and it is legit how many tiki bars have you been to like do you tiki bar across the country like like the way i you love a good tiki look- bar <laughs> he's a tiki connoisseur i love a good tiki bar so when i go down to florida or you know or anywhere on the on the ocean I seek out tiki bars because I love a good Pacific Island cocktail. Have you ever been to Otto Shrunken Head in New York? No, but, but I definitely have to go bar, now. Baby. Rock and roll tiki bar. <laughs> where Where nice. is it? It's on 14th Street down by like Avenue B. Okay. Here, I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll be right I, back. I got to go to this place. <laughs> Otto Shrunken Head Shrunken tiki head. bar. Yeah, that sounds cool. So, so during the pandemic, they 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 were selling they they sold like some of their glassware and there's my auto shrunken head awesome uh, <laughs> tiki bar skull uh mug that i keep here for my tiki drinks i love oh, yeah. it i love it there's are you there's, go ahead matt i was gonna say there's something about like a hot buttered rum mm. That I have just always loved, and I'm not really much of a rum guy. I'm not a rum guy either. But when it comes, uh, it's which is a a weird, you know, a weird drink to be kind of a tiki drink. Mm. But there's something about a hot buttered rum that I've always loved. You know, at first I thought you said hot buttered rump, which uh, (laughs) (laughs) well, that too. (laughs) Hell yeah, ass and butter. Uh huh. (laughs) <laughs> two greatest things <laughs> ever <laughs> Jerry, are you a, are you a christmas fan are you a fan of the holidays uh you know what i am okay i i am uh so i'm gonna you know, the downstrokes yeah. have a christmas song yes um which is you know and uh and and we do uh i i watch uh, uh probably about eight or nine different versions of a christmas carol every year because i like to believe in redemption which is your favorite I uh, I love uh, Patrick Stewart. That's uh, a good one, yeah. Uh, but I I also love the nineteen 
36 Alistair Sims is that yeah yeah that's a yeah, good one that's, too yeah that's great yeah. uh the a George C Scott musical from the 70s is uh-huh. pretty terrible it is terrible uh, but that's what I grew up on <laughs> yeah of course me too and and, yeah. and and of course I love Scrooged which oh, is yeah, not yeah. a Christmas carol but is a Christmas carol a, and of yeah. course it has the, the the double bonus of having David Johansson as the ghost of Christmas past, right. <laughs> uh, and you know, and I love Davy Joe, uh, who, 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 you know, I, you know, again, he was, you know, such a, such a cult figure growing up in New York. He, uh, and, and, and the rest of the dolls were just people I, I looked up to. Um, so, so I, I always feel a sort of soft spot in my heart when, when Davy Joe shows up in the cab. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm a Christmas guy. Good. So since you're a Christmas guy, I'm going to ask you, what is your Mount Rushmore of Christmas movies? And you get a crazy horse. So you get five. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I've already said I've already said uh, let's go Patrick Stewart uh, Christmas Carol. Okay. And let's go with Scrooge, of course, too. Uh, yeah. I'm going to throw in my favorite. The movie Mercedes and I watch every year is The Thin Man. The Thin Man. OK, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like OK. Thin Man. Which of course is a film noir, and yeah. it is like such not a Christmas movie, but it takes place at Christmas. And yeah. um, Mercedes likes to say that she and I are the Nick and Nora Charles <laughs> of punk rock. I can which see that. I can see Drink that. a lot and have parties. Yeah, um, that's accurate. So the Thin Man is in there. Um, let's go Gremlins. Okay. Oh uh, fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! You're. you're... Uh, yeah. You're hitting, you're you're hitting it right and on then, the head uh, every but time. But the, the last one, and it it makes me cry every year. I don't care. I'm happy to say it. Um, uh, I love it's a wonderful life. Okay. Uh, it's schmaltzy. It's it's everything. But you know, the capitalist gets it at the end, and people come together. I mean, what is more punk rock than the scene coming together and yeah. helping George Bailey? That for me. It is so fucking punk rock and sticking it to the capitalist motherfucker. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Um, and, and if we want to, if we want to fuse those Christmas carols together, um, I really love say anything to, um, uh, mm-hmm. if yeah. only, That's... if only, if, if only for, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the song, uh, in, mm. in which uh, it gets performed naked at the end in the relationship <laughs> with the manager. I, I, I just think yeah. it's 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 hysterical. Uh, also, and the Christmas lobster. Mm. Um, Christmas lobster. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The, kid, the yeah. kid plays the Christmas lobster yeah. in the play. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like a Christmas octopus. Like I, I just, it's so <laughs> surreal. I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's my wife's favorite Christmas movie. Um, yeah, it's a wonderful life. We go see that in the theaters. We've gone and saw that the past couple of years in the uh, AFI Silver in Silver Spring, Maryland, right across the street from the Fillmore. Uh, they play old movies all the time. And so Christmas time, they haven't put out their Christmas schedule yet, but they always play It's a Wonderful Life. Um, I'm a huge white Christmas fan. Um, you know. Wait, I, I often get white Christmas and holiday in confused. Okay. Uh, they're both Bing Crosby vehicles, and they both feature the song "White Christmas." But I think Holiday Inn is the one that has like the really weird Lincoln's birthday scene with the blackface. Um, so, yeah, I don't know uh, that one, so that's probably yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White Christmas, White Christmas is the one with the army soldiers. Yes, and with um, George Clooney's aunt. Um, yes, yeah, sisters, yeah. sisters. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah that's yeah. a great movie. Yeah. Uh, watch Holiday Inn, but but expect to cringe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll just Holiday, write that down. Holiday Inn is terrific, but there's there's a, a three minute scene in which you just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, thanks so much for doing this, man. Hey, I miss you. Dude. I love you guys so much. Right um, back at you. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, I I feel like considering. We live within a three-hour triangle of each yeah. other. The idea that we don't like to say, "Hey, let's go hang out in D.C. or somewhere." Yeah. Um, you know, I I feel like at some point there should be a show in which we all are not running, yeah. not playing, 
but going to and saying we should all hang out. And I know, Ron, we've talked about, you know, got to do uh, the Mets O's next year. Yeah. Uh, or maybe uh, maybe we should come up with a date where we do like one night a year where we just go out to fucking dinner and have some drinks and yeah, or, or go to, you know, and then go to a show or something like that yeah. or, or, or whatever. Or just hang out and fucking. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. love that. I would yeah. love that. You guys are good yeah. guys and I love what you do. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Yeah. And, and you know, right back. If there's anything I can do for you guys, you let me know. Awesome. Yeah. yeah it's it's funny. Last time I talked to you on the phone, um, I, I remember when I got off the phone, <laughs> my wife was coming home from work and I was on the phone with you and I was, and you said, you were like, I love you. I was like, I love you too. And my wife's like, who are you talking to? I was like, oh, my friend, Jerry. <laughs> I, can i say i am not scared to tell my friends i love you i don't uh, me I don't neither get yeah. it. i don't get like the fear or the weirdness it's like my life is too short no to i agree good, with you to not yeah. tell good people yeah. that that their presence in my life matters yeah i agree with you and i, I had it's, it's just funny for her to hear that and me to explain it's this is this guy that she's never met <laughs> <laughs> this crazy Italian punk rock dude that I talk to like three times a year. <laughs> I, you know, I, I but I'm a firm believer that there are people that you just go, they make the world better, and their presence in the world, even if they're mm. not close to me, make yeah. my world better. What you guys do with our brains hurt, uh, makes the punk community better. And Ron, I, you know, as soon as I met you the first time, I, you know, you and I have talked about this before. It was like instant simpatico. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, and of course, uh, every time I've come to an OBH show, every time you've had this out, mm. I've always felt, you know, welcomed and, oh, and yeah. valued. And, uh, you know, uh, you often don't get that in this. Yeah. So uh, in yeah. any community. So I'm yeah. grateful for both of you. Um, we are too. We pre- we appreciate yeah. and love you too, for sure. We do yeah. absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. So let's let's figure out a time to hang out in which we have no other responsibility than hanging out. Yeah, that, that'll be awesome. Yeah, yes. Because I know this about what you do, and you know this about what I do. You know, like people ask me about Savage Mountain. How is my set? <laughs> you think I'm sitting in the audience watching your fucking set? Yeah. I'm like <laughs> Exactly. I'm like putting out a fire, I'm up in a I'm up in the bathroom yeah, yeah. floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to figure out why a band that goes on in an hour isn't here yet. You think yep. I'm watching your damn set? Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You guys be well. Thanks for all you do. All right, Jerry. Take care. Hey, you too, Jerry. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thanks for hanging out for another week. Be sure to check out punkboxrocks.com and merchlet.com. Check us out on all social media outlets at Our Brains Hurt and at ourbrainshurt.com. We will talk to you next week. Stay safe. Adios. How do I do this shit? I can still hear you. Uh, so what, what do I have to press? Close.